My chin. Good. Really uh, more defined now. I'm down. I'm down 10 pounds in two weeks. Sorry there wasn't a video last week. I'm gonna get into the reason why in just a second. But I took all of these videos just when I had finished my last meal for the day. Every single intro to every single video in this series has been me when I just woke up. This time's a little different. You're gonna see I look a little bit different now than the next day when I just woke up. And there's a reason for this. One of which being me drinking a whole gallon of this almost every single day. I'm almost done. It's good. Oh yeah, by the way, this thing has zero calories. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't happy with my progress from, oh, I don't know, week four up to week nine. It just seemed like one pound a week here and there wasn't really cutting it, and doing cheat meals was probably like the wrong thing to do. I'm not gonna question my coach, and I have asked him why the cheat meal is justified, and he gave me a reason, but the way that I know how my body works, I don't think that it was right for that particular point in time. I think maybe now I might be getting closer to a point where I should be having my first cheat meal, not at week four. Okay, the reason I missed a video last week, first of all, is my new job is just so much training and so much new stuff to do, so much new stuff to learn. The second reason was that on March 19th, 2017, I went to another powerlifting meet, the USAPL Spring Summer Bash. Did I get that right? I hope the medal says the right name. <laughs> this meet wasn't as well organized as the Winter War that I covered last time in the video no one cares how much you lift. But I've been dieting to the point where now I've reached the threshold of where I start to lose a lot of strength. And it's not that I'm losing muscle necessarily, it's the fact that I'm losing the leverages that I have. At six foot zero inches tall, or about 183 centimeters, I need to be heavier than like 190 to be competitive in lifting. In fact, when I started squatting again this week, I mean, it was 135. I can do a lot more still, but I would say in a few weeks I can't. I want to talk about a lift where people really start to lose a lot of strength in when they get deeper into a diet. And it's not necessarily because they're losing muscle, but it's more so because they're losing their leverages. Now me at six foot zero inches tall, it's very difficult for me to be stronger when I'm under 190 pounds, which I've already crossed that threshold. This has been something I've been doing a lot in my life is that once I dip under 190 pounds, my lifts start to change. My pull-ups start to get a lot stronger, but my bench press and my squat start to decrease. My deadlift stays about the same depending on how much cardio and work capacity I have on my lower body. Now the one good thing that I got from this New Jersey powerlifting event was some really good squats and some really bad squats. One thing that you notice about people who are really good at the lift of squatting, they appear to be fat, they appear to be obese, and there's a reason for that. Let me explain. The reason why guys who appear to be kind of fat are better at the squat is because they usually have thicker midsections, and they also have thicker and shorter thighs. And when that works out, there's actually a greater cross-sectional area for the weight to sit on as it's on your back, and a greater cross-sectional area for the force to be applied to the bar in the upwards fashion. In other words, you have better leverage when you are thicker than when you're skinny. Now, that's not always the case for everybody, but in general, if you wanna excel at powerlifting, you're gonna have to fill out your weight class. For me, at six foot, zero inches tall, some people have told me it's, it's upwards of 275 pound weight class. I don't think I'm ever gonna get there, but we wanna look at some of these squats from today. A lot of people know you can burn a lot of calories just by sitting there if you have a lot of muscle. That means that you have a higher basal metabolic rate. The easiest way to put on a lot of muscle really quickly or in a shorter amount of time is to do squats, is to do lower body lifts, specifically squat. And if you have to substitute it with leg press, but inevitably go back to squat. I can't think of a single sports performance coach who's gonna go and say that squats are not good for you. They are the most functional because if you wanna run faster, you wanna jump higher, or you wanna have a greater rate of force development from your lower body, then the squats are literally the quintessential lift for you to do. Now, there's a few things about the squat I wanna talk about. And if you're a novice lifter, like say you're under 20 or even 25 years old, 
The squat is very difficult to master. In fact, it'll take you years before you can even get the form correct. The one thing that I do to warm up are these wall squats. And the reason that I do this is that it keeps my head back and up. It keeps my shoulders back. And then it also keeps my knees out. So when you're actually squatting with a weight on your back, the movement is kind of mimicked like this, but it's not exactly. The reason that you want to have your head back, most importantly, some people will say that if you keep your head up, it'll automatically keep your head back, but that's not always the case. The reason you want to keep your head back is because it can stress your lower back muscles more when your head is forward. In fact, the more forward your head is, the more weight that your back has to compensate in order to hold your head up. When your head is back, you'll also want your chest to be up and out and also keep your shoulders back as much as you can. Keeping your shoulders back means that you can have the weight on a larger area and keeping your chest up means that you can keep your lower back locked in position. Now the reason that you would want to keep your knees out is that it activates your glutes or your butt muscles. Those will help you as you lower the weight and then on the concentric action of the squat, they will also help you push the weight up. This also activates your hip flexors and also your hamstrings, which are two of the most important muscles in this lift. So what I've just described to you is called the posterior chain, where everything from the very back of your head all the way down to your ankles are interconnected in some way through your spine and through your pelvis. This is something that we call the posterior chain, which the squat is very heavily in favor of. The stronger posterior chain that you have, the stronger of a squat that you're going to have. But that also means that you have to keep upright. Now, there's a concept called torque, which plays a heavy role in squat. If you notice on a door, if you look, the door knob is always farther away from the hinge. Now, you can pull a door open easily from the knob, but if you wanna try pushing it from the hinge and get very close to the hinge, it becomes very difficult. So the reason for that is that you have greater torque in turning the door. Now, if the doorknob was even further away, you'd have an even easier time to close the door, but you'd also put more stress on the hinges. The same rule applies here in the squat, in the sense that we can say that the hinge is your butt, and we can say that the force is always going to go downwards of the weight that's on your back. So the longer the torso is that you have, the greater torque that you're going to undergo when you're squatting. The best way to minimize that is to keep your head back keep your chest up and out, keep your shoulders back, and definitely keep the weight over your heels as much as you can without falling forward. Falling forward is a very common problem that you'll see in people who squat, and at the heavier weights, you're gonna see their weaknesses. Usually that's a weakness in abdominal strength and also in lower back strength, but it also has to do with form in the fact that some people might not be keeping the right position as they go down in the descent or coming out of the hole, the very bottom of the squat. Sometimes people will have a very strange falling forward as they go up. A lot of this is corrected by abdominal work, lower back work, and sometimes upper back work, trying to keep a bigger shelf for the weight to sit on. Overall, I saw some really great squats at this powerlifting meet. The key things to remember is that squat builds a lot of muscle very quickly. That's good for you if you're looking to lose weight and trying to keep it off by having a lot of muscle on you. The second, if you want to get really good at the squat, it takes several years, if not decades, to get really good at it. The third is you want to keep your head back, you want to keep your chest up and out, shoulders back, and you want to push your butt back and your knees out so that you activate your hip flexors and your glutes. The wall squats are the easiest way to train this behavior. And that's it for this week. Thanks so much for checking in with me and I'll see you next week. Adios. Like it's, it's like almost five o'clock now and I'm- I guess this is like the downside to New Jersey powerlifting. I should compete. I could compete right now in my current state. <laughs>